65 million years ago, the first Cenozoic period began. Paleogene period. This period is quite huge and is divided into three epochs. Paleocene, Eocene and Oligocene. The Paleogene marked a kind of rebirth of the animal and plant world after the massive extinction that wiped out all the dinosaurs. The surviving mammals became the basis of the animal world. The climate on Earth became more continental. Ice caps and eternal ice formed on the highest mountain peaks. The diversity of flowering plants and insects increased. Bony fish dominate the world's seas and oceans. Primitive cetaceans show up. New groups of corals are born. New species of urchins populate the ocean floor. Monet-shaped nummy-like shells become permanent inhabitants of the boundless seas. Most invertebrates of the Paleogene differed from invertebrates living in today's seas. The Paleogene period was marked by a rapid flowering of mammals. A new fauna of our planet was born. Among the marsupial mammals were herbivores. These animals resembled modern kangaroos and marsupial bears. There were also predators. The marsupial wolf and the marsupial tiger. Many insectivores lived near bodies of water. Some marsupials adapted to life in trees. Marsupials gave birth to immature cubs, which were then nurtured for a long time in their skin pouches on their abdomens. But primitive marsupials didn't survive on land like placental mammals. These animals became extinct, unable to withstand the harsh climatic conditions elsewhere on the planet. Only in Australia, which was early separated from the other continents, did the evolutionary process seem to stand still. The marsupial kingdom has survived to this day. The Paleogene period is characterized by an uneven distribution of fauna over the continents. Tapers, Titanotherians evolved predominantly in the Americas. The trunks and carnivores in Africa. The marsupials continue to live in Australia. Thus, gradually the fauna of each continent acquires an individual character. Many toothless birds, characteristic of our time as well, appeared. But along with them lived huge flightless, running, birds, completely extinct in the Paleogene. These are Diatrima and Fororacos. Diatrima was two meters tall with a long, half-meter long beak. Each of its strong legs was equipped with four toes and long claws. Diatrima lived in the arid steppes and fed on small mammals and reptiles. Four Arakos reached one and a half meters in height. Its sharp, hooked, half-meter-long beak was a formidable weapon. Because this bird had small, undeveloped wings, it could not fly. The long, strong legs of the four Arachislav show that the birds were excellent runners. According to some researchers, the homeland of these huge birds was Antarctica, covered with forests and steppes at the time. What was the animal life like in the Paleocene, which came just after the extinction and lasted 10 million years? Let's take a look. At that time, the continents were still in motion. Gondwana was still splitting apart. South America was now completely cut off from the rest of the world and had become a kind of floating ark. A unique mammal fauna was born on this continent. In the Paleocene, the first Juliads appeared. They were the most interesting snails in nature. New varieties of sea urchins and foraminifers appeared. Cretaceous ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs and other predators of the time were replaced by bony fish and a wide variety of sharks. The dominant species was the rayfish. Among them were the almost modern perch, herring, catfish and pike. Paleocene sharks became more and more similar to modern sharks. The first modern genera appeared. The leopard shark and the rusty nurse shark. 
The largest Paleocene shark was the Otitus, which reached a length of 9 meters. Other Paleocene sharks reached only 3 meters in length. Some paleontologists speculate that, in the first million years of the Paleocene, there were still single species of dinosaurs in some places. Critosaurus, for example. But even if dinosaurs really did live in the early Paleocene, it didn't last long. Here are the three main groups of mammals. The monotremes, marsupials, and placentals. The first bestial animals appeared on Earth about 200 million years ago. But these protozoans were no match for the dinosaurs, so they waited patiently and secretly for about 150 million years. The mammals of the early Cenozoic boasted a diversity of species. Some early mammals remained insectivorous. The first shrews and hedgehogs ate crawling insects, challenging competitors such as frogs and toads for food. Did insects that flew stay safe? That didn't happen either. Some mammals took to the air and went after flying insects, which represented unlimited food resources. There were plenty of food niches left empty after the dinosaurs died. For this reason, some early mammals shifted to a diurnal lifestyle and diversified their diets considerably. Early mammals evolved into many groups of animals of very different shapes and sizes, allowing these animals to inhabit almost any habitat. Insectivores remained the smallest. Larger animals became active hunters or fed on carrion. Amblypods were clumsy animals that ate leaves and other vegetation. Flat-footed, carnivorous creodonts may have been no larger than an ermine or, conversely, may have been larger than the biggest bear. Allotherians also dominated mammals in the Mesozoic and were some of the most diverse animals of the Paleocene. These animals were small in the Cretaceous and became much larger in the Paleocene. Only three species of cloaca mammals have survived from the Paleocene. These are two species of echidnas and one species of platypus. They are found only in Australia and New Guinea. The first marsupials inhabited North America about 100 million years ago. Later, in the Eocene, these animals spread across all continents except Africa and Asia and made their way to Australia via Antarctica. The marsupials are more highly organized animals than the cloaca, but, despite this, the Paleocene marsupials were represented exclusively by possums. In the Paleocene, many placental mammals remained small animals, somewhat similar to their Cretaceous ancestors. But soon these animals began to seriously compete with the marsupials. The ability to maintain a constant body temperature, a progressive reproduction method and a large brain allowed these mammals to become a thriving group of animals and gradually established their dominance over the entire surface of the globe. The Lavraciotes were very diverse, ranging from 12 centimeters to 2.5 meters and weighing from 60 grams to 650 kilograms. The evolutionary race in the Paleocene was won not by those animals that adapted better to their ecological niches, but by those that were the first to occupy them. Hoofed predators, as well as clawed and fanged goats, were common in the Paleocene. The second most abundant genus was the order Mesonychians. They were the ancestors of modern cloven-hoofed animals as well as, surprisingly enough, whales. The first Mesonychians were predators, but they also had hooves on their feet. This group included Cynonyx, which had many of the small traits present in cetaceans. The most interesting thing is that no other animal had such traits. Therefore, Cynonyx is considered the direct ancestor of cetaceans. 
Condylarthra were the ancestors of cloven-hoofed ungulates, trunked animals, and even whales. The cloven-hoofed animals include modern pigs, deer, antelope, and others. Unpaired ungulates include horses, tapirs, and rhinoceroses. Some condylarthra transformed the claws on their toes into hooves some still lived with claws. When the last sauropods became extinct, local shrews had to urgently grow and transform into goats, cows, and rhinoceroses. Carnivora morphs. These were the ancestors of modern beasts of prey, as well as wyverns. In the Paleocene, they were small carnivores up to 80 centimeters long, like ferrets and mongooses. Many of these small animals lived in trees. Large burrowing herbivores called dinocerates appeared. In the Paleogene, a large superorder called Euarchontogliers originated. Euarchontogliers was the common name for rodents, primates, and woolly woolly creatures. The animals were small and omnivorous and many lived in trees. These creatures divided into two groups, one of which was named primates. The Zavropsids were a branch of the four-legged vertebrates that included reptiles and birds. The largest group of this class is called the Crocodilomorphs. The group was part of the modern crocodilian order, which made up 13% of all genera. Paleocene crocodiles were up to four and a half meters in size. Some crocodile species lived in the water. Some lived on land. And Pristichampsis crocodiles could run on two legs, like dinosaurs. In the Paleocene, there was the Ceratozoochus. It was the only crocodile known to science with horns. Why Ceratozoochus needed horns is unknown to science. The other 13% of the Paleocene genera were birds. These included geese, ducks, penguins, owls, cranes, flamingos, pelicans, cormorants, petrels, plovers, casuars, and pelagornithids. Pelagornithids were similar to modern albatrosses, but very large and with teeth in their beaks. Also in the Paleocene there was a bird similar to the modern crane. It was the Presbyornis. At that time there lived a flightless bird called the diatrima. Diatrima was up to 2 meters tall and weighed up to 100 kilograms. It is worth mentioning the wyman, which was the ancestor of all penguins and the emu ostrich. This genus originated exactly in the Paleocene. The scaly reptiles gave rise in the Paleocene to the largest snake in the history of the Earth. This is the titanoboa. The snake could be up to 15 meters long. At its widest point, the diameter could be 1 meter. The titanoboa could weigh up to 1,135 kilograms. One of the scaly mammals survived to this day. It was the two-walker Rhinura. Among the Paleocene sauropsids, it is also worth mentioning the small aquatic reptiles Chorostotera, which look like crocodiles but are not related. Thank you for watching this episode to the end. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also click on the bell not to miss new and interesting videos from the channel Real Unreal.